trading ETFs on major platforms like Charles Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard, and others is now free from all brokerage commissions, you still have to be smart when it comes to properly executing your ETF trades. Hi there, everybody. I'm Lynn Dolan with ETF Guide. And in this episode, we'll examine some best practice trading tips for buying and selling ETFs. First up is to always compare bid-ask spreads of similar ETFs that you want to buy or sell. The ETF spread is the difference between the bid price, or what buyers are willing to pay, and the ask is what sellers are willing to receive. Wider spreads add to your trading costs, so before buying an ETF, check the fund's bid-ask spread and see how it compares with similar types of funds. Many ETF sponsors will provide regular updates on bid-ask spreads of their products at their websites. Morningstar.com is another resource that reports ETF bid-ask spreads in percentage terms to illustrate estimated trading costs. Spreads for the most heavily traded ETFs like the Spider S&P 500 ETF, ticker symbol SPY, can be as little as one penny. Our next tip for best practices when it comes to trading ETFs is the following. Stay away from the market open and close. Why? Keep in mind that at the markets open, it is common to see wider ETF bid and ask spreads because not all of the stocks or holdings within the ETF may be trading at the open. And the result of that is wider bid ask spreads, which are bad because it increases your trading costs. What about the end of the market day? Authorized participants, or APs as they're known, may be reluctant to take on large positions because they want to balance their books and go home. The final result is it can lead to larger than usual spreads on ETF bid asks prices. What's the best way to avoid this? As a general rule, keep a 30-minute window between ETF trades at the very open and the close of the market. This will help you to avoid the problem of wider bid-ask spreads and the increased trading costs that come with it. Our next tip is to use marketable limit orders instead of just plain market orders. Here's why. Marketable limit orders offer advantages over market orders in terms of price, control, and protection, while providing some trading flexibility. They're essentially a form of limit order that may offer a higher likelihood of execution. For example, a limit order with a purchase price set in between the bid and ask has less chances of order completion than a marketable limit order that is set to buy at the ask price. Although a market order may be effective when dealing with highly liquid ETFs, there is always a risk of poor execution. On the other hand, a marketable limit order sets a boundary around the price at which an investor is willing to transact. The higher the limit price for a buy and the lower the limit price for a sell, the greater the probability that the trade will be executed. So, where's a good place to start? For marketable limit orders, a starting point might be to add a small amount, like a penny or two, to the best ask price for a buy or, in the case of a sell, then subtract a small amount, like a penny or two, from the best bid price. Next, let's talk about large ETF trades of 10,000 shares and up. What's a smart way to ensure best execution? Be sure to contact your brokerage firm's block trading desk, who can help tackle these types of large ETF trades. For example, a block desk might be able to find and access unseen liquidity in the market where your ETF trades and help you to implement the trade in smaller digestible increments. What if you're trading ETFs that own international securities or commodities? 
Differences in trading hours for ETFs underlying securities may lead to diminished liquidity in the fund along with pricing discrepancies between the ETF's share price and the value of its underlying holdings. Here's a tip that can help you to minimize these obstacles. When trading ETFs that own international or emerging market stocks, consider timing your order for when the markets for those stocks are open. For U.S. investors, you can do this with European and Latin American markets, but for Asian and Australian securities, their trading hours have no overlap with U.S. trading hours. Finally, when trading ETFs that own commodities, keep in mind that trading hours for commodities can differ greatly from those of U.S. stock exchanges. Whatever commodity ETF you buy or sell, try to do it when that commodity is open for trading. Check trading hours on the Chicago and New York Mercantile Exchange. Another tip for trading ETFs is to be aware of your fund's dividend dates. While not all ETFs pay dividends, those that do have regular dividend distributions that are paid out quarterly or semi-annually. Before buying an ETF, you should know its distribution date. Why? Because on the ETF's dividend date, its share price will fall by the amount of the distribution, and that will impact the value of the shares you're buying or selling. Our final tip for best practices when trading ETFs is to use borrowed money sparingly. You see, trading with margin or borrowed money from your broker can magnify your returns, but it can also magnify losses. Keep in mind that when you trade with margin, you can lose more money than you've invested. Additionally, you may have to deposit additional cash or securities in your account to cover market losses. Moreover, you may be forced to sell some or all of your securities when falling prices reduce the value of your portfolio. Don't let these pitfalls sink you. Trading on margin is strictly reserved for investors with high tolerance for risk and volatility. That does it for your ETF trading tips. I'm Lynn Dolan at ETF Guide. Thanks for watching.